DaVinci Resolve 17.4 is upon us. It was released today and it's available to download and install right now. I've linked to the DaVinci Resolve website down in the description, or if you've got DaVinci Resolve installed already, open it up, click on DaVinci Resolve top left-hand corner, check for updates, and it'll prompt you that there is an update to be installed and you can download it and install it from there. Now, Blackmagic have actually released a video showing you what's new. I've linked that down in the description as well. But in this video, I'm going to delve into some of the features just in a little bit more detail. Some of the things that I think are really cool and really nice to have, which have been included finally in DaVinci Resolve 17.4. Now let's get the headline stuff out of the way first of all. All the promotional material you've probably seen is talking about this five times faster. Blackmagic have clearly put lots of effort into making sure that DaVinci Resolve is going to run really, really well on the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips within the new Apple MacBook Pros, which is really cool. And they are looking very, very impressive indeed. They're talking about being able to edit multiple layers of 8K as well as having 120 hertz playback, loads of really cool stuff. So really looking forward to seeing what they do with those. I haven't pre-ordered one, but if you'd like to see me put one to the test, let me know down in the comment section below. Now, it's not just love for Apple either. There is some love for Windows users. If you're using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, this latest version now has hardware encoding built in, which means you can render your videos using the H.265 format. This means you'll be able to render your videos faster and they will have smaller file sizes, which is really, really awesome. I've actually done a separate video on that, which you can see by clicking the link up here somewhere. Right, the big headlines out of the way, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at some of these cool features. Now, I'm going to be spending most of my time on the edit page because that's generally where I live anyway. So let's open it up and take a look. And the first one we're going to have a look at are the effects library folders. So this is DaVinci Resolve 17.4. I'm going to open up effects, which has now been renamed by the way. It used to be effects library. Now it just says effects. And down here, you can see I've got my video transitions but there's an extra little drop down on the left. And I give that a click and within my video transitions, I can actually have folders. So I've got Mr. Alex Tech and then I've got Motion VFX under there. If I click on the Mr. Alex Tech and I expand that, I've got folders within there. So I've got my slice transitions and my ultimate transitions. If I just click on Mr. Alex Tech, all of the transitions will be there, but they'll be categorized by the folders. And if I want to see all of my transitions, I can jump back up to video transitions and I've got the full list within there. And then the same under here, I've got motion VFX. And then within there, there's another folder called channel clean and the transitions are in there. Now, quick caveat, these folders aren't necessarily designed for everyone to use themselves. It's not designed for you to really quickly be able to organize things on the fly on the edit page. It's more for the people that create the macros themselves. They can put them into folders. Or if you buy a transition pack, for example, it should come in a nice folder so they're all categorized accordingly. You can sort of do it yourself, but it depends how the packs were delivered. I'll do a separate video talking about the process at a later date. But still talking about transitions, there's a few other additions, so let's hop back in and take a look. Now, the first one might not seem that interesting, but if we go to video transitions, scroll down in the iris area, we now have a square iris transition, which we can just drag and pop onto our timeline like so. And now we've got a square iris transition like that. Now, if we give that transition a click in the inspector, you can see we now have this aspect ratio. So this is completely new. So it's a square transition at the moment, but we can change the aspect ratio of that transition. So we've got this sort of really tall portrait style transition instead, or we can change that again to make it a really wide. And then we've got this widescreen transition instead. So with a little bit of tweaking, I actually think that square transition with the aspect ratio controls within the inspector may be really quite cool. And you can probably do some fun stuff with it. Next up, we've got the asymmetrical trimming of these transitions. So any transition you put on your timeline, we're going to stick with this square one for now. Hold the control key, then click on one of the edges. You can lengthen it and shorten it just on one side. You can drag this transition so it's really small over here, but really long over here and then job 
done. So it just gives us that little bit of extra flexibility when working with these video transitions, which is really, really cool. Now, next up, we've got fine tuning audio. Someone actually asked me about this in the comments recently, so perfect timing. You can now make really fine adjustments to the volume of clips directly on the timeline, which is really, really cool. So on the timeline, when you've got an audio clip like this, you can see you've got this really faint little line. And if I click and drag, I can adjust the volume up and down like so. Now, if I hold the shift key and then click and drag, I can make really fine adjustments. So I can just do bit by bit rather than before when you're just making really big jumps like that. It's a really nice little addition, which just makes it a little bit easier to change the volume of the clip directly on the timeline. Now, staying on the timeline, smoothing out keyframes has just got a whole lot easier and they look a whole lot better straight away. This is something, again, we've wanted for ages and they've implemented it really nicely in DaVinci Resolve 17.4. So for this example, I've got this basic title on my timeline like so, and all we're gonna do is have it animate in from the side. So I'm gonna come to the beginning, move my position over to the left, we'll keyframe that, and then we'll move forward on the timeline, bring this right the way in like so, and then if we hit play, we've got this real basic animation coming in like so. We're gonna click on this little icon here to open up our curves. It's already opened up my position, which is perfect, and we can see our two keyframes here. Now, the main difference here is the scaling. Usually when you do small adjustments like this, it'd be really hard to see the difference because as you can see, the scale is 1920. It wouldn't work particularly well. Now it looks much better. So we can give this one a click and then we can use the icons to give it a curve or my preferred method, just right click, change to ease in, and then I can just make this a curve. We're gonna to come to this other keyframe, left click so it's red, right click, ease out, give it a nice little curve like so, give that a play, and now we've got some nice acceleration with that title. It's much more intuitive and it's much easier to do directly within the curves on the edit page. That's an absolute winner, makes life so much easier. Now hopping into Text Plus, they've actually made these quite a bit better as well. They've done loads of improvements. You've now got things like vertical text and you can underline vertical text, which you couldn't do before. So that's cool. One of the big additions, which I think a lot of people have been asking for, is you can now have your text read from right to left rather than left to right. Within the text plus, in the inspector, scroll to the bottom, under advanced controls, you've got reading direction, and then you can change it left to right or right to left, which means when you're animating the text, you can get it to come in from the correct direction, which is really good for those that read right to left rather than left to right. Now, sticking on the text plus, if I come in here and make some changes, we'll change the font, we'll change the color, we'll do all this sort of fun stuff. I can now undo those things with a control Z. So I can undo the color, the size, with a control Z. Now that seems obvious, but you actually couldn't do that before. If you're using a text plus or you're within the inspector of a fusion effect or whatever, you couldn't do a control Z. It would actually undo the last thing you did on the timeline rather than the last thing you did within the inspector. So again, that's a really small thing, but really, really nice quality of life change they've made there. Now composite modes, they've changed the previews for composite modes. So much like the fonts they introduced a few versions back. If I give this clip a click, we're gonna scroll on down until we get to the composite mode, give the drop down a click. We can now view the effect that these composite modes are gonna have on our footage by simply hovering our mouse over the effect, scrolling down, and we can actually see what it's gonna do. So rather than having to pick and hope we've gone with the right one, we can just scroll through and have a look. If I change the opacity, so let's go with a bit, a bit lower, it still works, we can view the effect with that opacity change applied, and it just makes life a whole lot easier once again. Now staying on the timeline, the speed editor now works on the edit page with multicams. So you can use the multicam buttons on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve to flick between your different angles. I don't actually have my speed editor hand at the moment, so I can't show you that, but the Black Magic video does have a demonstration of that, so go check that out. People have wanted that for ages, so again, another really nice to have. Next up, green screens. I don't do much green screening myself, but they've improved some of the things within the 3D Kia, so once again, you can do more on the edit page without having to hop into Fusion, which is really, really cool. So let me show you how that works. So we've got this footage here with the green screen. All I'm gonna do is open up my effects library. We're gonna to go to 
open effects. Scroll down until we get to the key area. We've got 3D here, and we're gonna drop that on our footage like so. We're gonna open up the inspector, go to effects, 3D here, and we've got all our options in here. Now, before we do any of that, underneath our preview window, we need to click on our little drop down, and we go to the open effects overlay, and now I'm gonna add a stroke. Now, if I click and drag, I can actually draw, and the preview window turns black and white. Now, black is the thing that's being taken out, that's being keyed out, and white is the area that's still visible. So I'm gonna let go of my mouse, and we can see this black area has remained transparent, but we've got the green left in the corners. So within my 3D key, I'm just gonna to go to the plus, so we can add an additional stroke, and now we're gonna do another one to get rid of the rest, this little corner down here, and release. And it's just a really nice way of being able to see clearly what you've keyed out and what you haven't. In this stroke area, we can now see the individual strokes that we've added. And straight away, that's done a pretty good key. But there's a bit of green fringing going along in a hair. In the behavior options, we've now got this de-spill. So all I'm going to do, drag this to the right. And you can see straight away now, we've got a much, much nicer key. If I go to the generators, let's just grab a four color gradient, put this underneath. In not much time at all, we've got a pretty nice key going on. Now, if you're anything like me, you're a YouTuber, these next two are really, really awesome, and they involve being able to export your videos directly from DaVinci Resolve straight to YouTube. And now they've added the fact that you can add markers in DaVinci Resolve, export those, and they become YouTube chapters when they're uploaded to YouTube. Now, the first thing I need to show you is how to actually log into YouTube. You may not have done it before, so let me show you that, and then I'll show you the new features. So click on DaVinci Resolve, top left-hand corner, then go to Preferences. Make sure you're on the System page by clicking System at the top here. Then from the left-hand menu, come down to Internet Accounts, and you'll see YouTube, Sign In to Publish Directly to YouTube. Simply click Sign In, then fill in all the details, and DaVinci Resolve will be connected to your YouTube channel. So if that's done, let's add some markers. So what you need to do, first things first, put your playhead at the very beginning, because you always need a chapter to be at zero on YouTube, and then just hit M on your keyboard to add a marker. And you'll get this little blue marker here. Make sure that you're adding it on the timeline. So if I select this clip and hit M, the marker will be on the clip itself. We don't want that. We want the marker to be on the timeline. So make sure nothing's selected, then put your playhead where you need it to be. Now, if I double click on this little marker, I've got a name. I'm going to call this intro and then click on done. We can change the color if we want. I'm just going to leave it to the default as the blue. And then all the different points where you want chapters within your YouTube video, just add another marker. Don't forget that YouTube chapters need to have a 10 second gap between each of them. So make sure that you leave 10 seconds between each of your markers on your timeline within the edit page. So I'm gonna come forward to this 16 seconds here. We'll add another one and another and another over here. And then for each of them, we'll double click, add a name and off we go. Then if we hop into the deliver tab, we click on the YouTube preset at the top. There is a drop down, so we've got the options between 720, 1080p or 2160. I'm just gonna go with 1080p. We can fill in all of our details. Now this is something else they've added new. We now have more control over our video codecs, the type of renderer. They've added some additional options within here, which is very, very welcome indeed. Under here, we've got title and description. So this is the title and description for the YouTube videos. We've got this upload directly to YouTube, which we can now do because we're logged in. And then under here, we've got chapters from markers. So I'm gonna give that a tick, and then I get to choose the color of the markers to use as chapters. I left mine as blue, so we're gonna leave it as blue. And then if I was to add this to the render queue and click render all, this video will be rendered as normal, so you can see it's rendering in the render queue. And then once it's finished rendering, we then get another countdown, so I've got a timer here with a percentage, and what this is now doing is simply uploading this video to YouTube. So if we just wait till that's done, and then we have a look at what's going on. So check it out. Here's the video, it's been uploaded to my YouTube channel. You can see we've got the title and the description that I added, but more importantly, we've got our chapters. We've got our intro at zero, our slide at 16, and our marker four at 58. Now I try and make sure to put YouTube chapters on all of my tutorials, so the fact that I can now do it directly on the timeline within 
the edit page of DaVinci Resolve is an absolute winner and a real, real time saver. So there you go. That are the things which I think are really worth talking about in the new version of DaVinci Resolve 17.4. If I've missed anything, if there's anything else you think is really awesome and worth talking about, let me know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.